Welcome back to my Roblox Beginner Scripting Tutorial Guide. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about events. Now, I want you to imagine that it's your birthday today. Uh, you just had a long, hard day of school, and you're walking back home from the bus, and you're about to open your front door. And when you do open your front door, you are greeted with a surprise birthday party that was hosted by your family. And now they're coming over to you to give you hugs, give you presents, and enjoy the rest of the day specifically for you because you opened your front door that basically triggered the situation to happen. Now, basically what I'm trying to get at here is the concept of events where things happen because other things have happened. So that basically works the same way when we're using events inside of Roblox Studio. And that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do inside of this episode. So what we're going to do on the right side is basically click our script that we created in the last episode, disable it, and then we're going to insert a new script inside of the workspace, just like this. I'm going to rename this to events, and then I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to delete this code. So events is a pretty broad topic to talk about in Roblox Studio, and it can be very complicated depending on what kind of events you're working with. So for the sake of this episode, uh, I'm going to be introducing to you two built-in functions that Roblox Studio has I'm going to be providing to you two built-in events that Roblox Studio has provided to us that I think are the most common ones used that I think you should be aware of um, as for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is go back to our script and there's going to be two of them. But the first one I'm going to introduce to you is the trigger or the event of when a player joins into the server. And this is called the player added event that lies within the player's folder. Now it's very interesting because up until this point, we've only worked with the workspace folder contained within the game data model. But this time we're actually gonna be using an event that's contained within the player's folder inside of the game data model. So what we're going to do is go back to our script and we are going to say game dot players. So we're not going to say workspace. We're going to say players. And then we're going to say dot player added. And you can tell that this is an event with this lightning bolt symbol over here. So I'm just going to autocorrect this with a uh, player added. And here's the interesting thing. So we have our player added event, but we need to be able to connect this event to a function that is going to run when this is triggered. So basically what this is going to look like is we're actually going to put a colon symbol right here and then we are going to say connect just like this. You can either say connect with an uppercase C or a lowercase C, it doesn't really matter that much, but I'm gonna say uppercase C. And then what we're going to do here is put in two parentheses, so open and close parentheses just like this, and then we're going to put a function within these parentheses. So we're going to create a new function by saying function, open and close parentheses, and then we're going to go on this right side here, which is in between these two parentheses, and we're gonna hit enter just like this. And one final thing is we're going to be adding a parameter that Roblox has provided to us, which is the player that has joined into the game for this event. So we can call this whatever we want, but I'm just gonna say player just like this. And so this is the structure of how we create events and how we make function that fires once the event has been triggered. This is one way of writing it, but I'm going to show you the other way in just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is write a print statement here by saying a new player has joined into the game. And what's also interesting about this is we have the player itself, like the player object being passed into this as a parameter. So we can actually do things with this player. And just for a simple example, we can print out the player itself just by saying print open and close parentheses and we can just pass in the player directly and if we go into the game and hit play then what should happen is it's going to say a new player has joined into the game and then it's going to print out the name of my player which is brawl battle because i joined into the game and this fires every single time a new player joins into the game so that is one of the most common built-in events that roblox studio has for us that we can use so I'm just gonna hit stop, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you the other way of writing an event, and this one should be more familiar with the way we write functions and how it applies to an event. So what I'm going to do is delete uh, our code that we have here up until this point, and we're going to create a function. So we're gonna say local function. We can call this whatever we want. We can say player added just like this, and then inside of these parentheses, we're going to pass in our player parameter just like this, and then we're going to hit enter. So we can do the exact same thing we just did in the last uh, example. We can say print a new player has 
joined, and we can even print out the player as well. Now we've created the function. We still need to add our uh, player added event down here by saying game dot players dot player added colon connect open and close parentheses. Now, instead of writing a new function inside of here, we can just simply pass in our player added function that we created on top of here previously. So we can just say player added, which is a reference to our player added function that we just created. And it's automatically going to pass in the player argument just like that. And this is another way we can write events and how we attach a function to these events when they get triggered. So if we go into the game and hit play, then it should basically say the exact same thing, saying a new player has joined, and it also printed out my username right down here. So that is basically how we write events inside of our scripts, and that is how we use the player added event. But now I'm gonna be showing you the second event that is very commonly used, and that is called touched. So basically, every single object or instance that you can see inside of this workspace, like uh, these parts and also the spawn location and this base plate, they have a built-in function called touched, which basically triggers if another part touches it. Now, what this means is uh, we can either have another part touch a part or we can have our player touch um, the part as well because our player is also classified as a bunch of parts put together as well. So this is very useful if we want to have a touch detection for if a player steps on a part. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do for the rest of this tutorial. So what we can do is go into model and we're going to click on part. So we're going to insert a new part inside of the workspace and I'm going to go to the right side, rename this part to touch part, just like this. And I'm also going to go down here and I'm going to check this property called anchored. Now, basically what anchored is, is it's a property that allows us to hold a part in place so that it's not affected by gravity. So what I'm going to do is basically click on this move tool and I'm going to move it up here so that um, once it's up here, it's going to stay in place and it's not going to drop down due to gravity since we have this anchored property enabled. So now that we have this, let's go back to our script and I'm actually going to delete everything we've had up until this point. So I'm gonna hit control A and delete. And I'm first going to make reference to our touch part. So I'm gonna say local touch part equals game dot workspace dot touch part just like this. And now what I'm going to do is say touch part dot touched. So this is an event that's contained within our touch part. And then we're going to say colon connect open and close parentheses. We're going to create a new function. So we're going to say function open and close parentheses again. And we're going to pass in the other part that touched this part. So we're going to say other part just like this. And then in between here, we're going to hit enter. And so now what we can do is we can basically print out um, the other part that touched this part in specific, which is the touch part. Now, specifically, what we can do is print out the name of this other part. So we can say dot name just like this. So we can see what's touching this part inside of studio. So if we go into the game, uh, hit test and hit play then what we should see uh, is first of all, the part is floating in mid air because we enabled the anchor property. So if we touch it, what we should see is a bunch of parts touching this touch part. Um, and these are all referring to parts that are contained within my character. So we have things like the upper right arm, uh, the head, upper torso, left upper arm, and things like that. So we can keep on touching this and it's going to basically print out every part that's touching this part that's over here. Now, because our character makes up many different parts, it's constantly firing in the output uh, all of these different parts that's touching this part. So what we can actually do is if we want to have, let's say, uh, the player touch this part one time and then wait a certain amount of time before we're allowed to touch it again, we can use what's called debouncing, which is basically what allows us to have a cooldown for this touch. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like really quickly. So I'm gonna hit stop and I'm going to go back to our script. And what we're going to do is create a Boolean value that basically says whether this part is currently being touched right now. So what we're going to do is say local part is touched equals false. So currently the part is not being touched. 
And so basically what we're going to do is drop a line at the start here and we're going to check if the part is currently being touched or not. Okay, and so what we're going to do at the start here is we're going to write an if statement by saying if part is touched equals false. So basically if the part is not being touched, then we can trigger whatever is going to be inside of here by saying uh, then like this, and then we're gonna hit enter. Then we're going to move our print statement inside of here and what we're going to do at the start here is we're going to say part is touched equals true. Now that uh, we know that part is touched is false, we're going to set this equal to true. And then we're going to make the print statement down here. Now to add a cooldown, what we're going to do is put in a task.wait for a certain number of time. Uh, we can put in however many number of seconds we can put in here. We can say, let's say two seconds. And then we're going to say part is touched is back equal to false, just like this. And this is basically how we add a debounce or a check um, or a cooldown to our touched event, just like this. We first check if nothing is touching the part, then we're going to say the part is being touched, and then we're gonna wait two seconds, and then we're going to say that the part is no longer being touched, so we can touch it again. So if we go into the game, hit play, then what, what should happen is if we touch this part, then it's only going to say one thing has been touched and it's not going to repeatedly um, print out or execute this event until we wait two seconds. So we touch it again, it's going to say something else has touched it and then it's just going to do this after we wait for the cooldown and that is basically how we add a cooldown to these event calls and that is by using debounce. So I hope you learned a lot from this episode with events, those are basically the basics of using events. And now for today's learning objective, what I want you to do is continue to use uh, this touched event or use the player added event so that you can do more stuff with either the player or you can do more stuff with these parts. You can maybe even change the color of these parts if you step on it and make it go back after a certain period of time. There's a lot of possibilities you can do with this. So I encourage you to do that. And once you do that, I want you to go down to the comments so that you can paste your code so that other people can see what you're doing that you feel comfortable sharing. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one. Take care.